Hello everyone, my name is Paper Napkin, and welcome back to another episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1. In the last episode, we visited the towns of Onrak and Gaia, where we found out we need to get ourselves a ferry in order to get some Oxy Ale so that we can take the submarine down to the Water Shrine. Unfortunately, the only ferry that we know about was sold to the caravan, and while we have a general idea of where he is, we don't know his exact location. We know he's to the desert north of here, but he doesn't show up on the map anywhere, so you actually have to disembark and walk around until you come across him. And if you don't know where to look, this can take quite a while. I know I remember my first time playing through, I pretty much looked on every part of the desert, and that was probably pretty stupid of me because honestly, this part of the desert sticks out like a sore thumb, so you'll want to check here first. Now, you'll probably remember, can't disembark on the desert itself, so you need to find a nice piece of grass like this here. But there is a bug in this game where you can physically land on the caravan itself, which is pretty useful if you know where it is, and thankfully I do know where it is, it's just right here. So you can save yourself a bit of walking and you know avoiding some pretty strong encounters with enemies here, and just disembark, walk off, walk on, you're in the Oasis shop. And for a mere 50,000 gold pieces, you can buy yourself a bottled fairy, which is pretty good, especially when you consider you need this item to progress the storyline. So now that we have our ferry, let's head over to the spring at Gaia and get ourselves some Oxy Ale. Now that we're back at the spring, if you walk up to it, use your bottled ferry, it should pop out, and then we'll be able to talk to it and she'll give us some delicious Oxy Ale. Yay! If you talk to her again, she'll mention that it allows us to uh, breathe underwater as it gives us some air, which is pretty cool. So now that we have that, let's head back over to Onrak and we'll take the submarine down to the water shrine. Now that we're at the submarine in Onrak, we talk to this lovely lady here. She'll take our Oxy Ale, put it in our submarine, and we can now go down to the Water Shrine. So let's go ahead and do that. We actually don't get to drive the submarine, which kind of sucks. It just takes us to the Water Shrine itself. And now this dungeon has quite a bit going on here. It's probably the easiest dungeon in the game in that all the enemies here are pretty much weak to lightning. There are a couple of them that aren't, but they're weak to ice instead. I'll point those out along the way if we come across them. But if you have lightning too, if you have the Zeus Gauntlet, things here are really, really easy to kill. Also about this dungeon, it doesn't start you at the top or the bottom, it actually starts you in the middle. And if you go up, you'll go to some treasure rooms, which have a lot of really good items that you'll want to get along the way. Whereas if you go down, it'll take you down to the fiend that's guarding the, the third orb. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to break this into two episodes. The first of which is just going to be us going upwards, getting all the treasure. And then the second one will be us going downwards and fighting the, the boss. Just because this dungeon is pretty big and you want to make sure you get all the treasure here because it really, really is awesome. So first up, let's head north here until we get to our intersection here. Head left. And we should come across some new enemies. Okay, we have the sea troll and we have some lobsters. Now these things are obviously weak to lightning. I'm not going to use any lightning 2 spell charges from uh, Lexa at this point, just because the Zeus gauntlet should be enough to take out most of the enemies. If not, I mean the physical attacks from my characters will clean up. And 50 damage and 140 damage, wow. So even though it's only lightning 2, because the enemies are weak to lightning, it's going to end up doing a lot of damage, especially over time, so clearing this area out is really not that big of an issue. I should point out, I did level up to level 20, just because I was falling a bit behind. Uh, I bought uh, a gold bracelet for Pancake, and I bought a gold bracelet for Hope, so everyone is pretty much at their ideal setup for now. So this should be a really, really easy dungeon to cruise through. So if we head over here, we'll come across a room and it has an unguarded treasure chest. Inside we have about 10,000 gold, which is pretty good. So let's head back to that intersection. And we have another new enemy. We have the Great Shark, or the Gray Shark, rather. And these things are just like normal sharks, except that they have more hit points and maybe do a little bit more damage. Nothing too worrisome. I think they have like 300 hit points or so, but yeah. Take them out as quickly as possible. Shouldn't give you any problems. And is that enough? Nope, okay. Two rounds to take it out. Not too bad, though. And don't be afraid to use your spell charges this first time around, just because I will be using exit in between 
uh, episodes to uh, go back to the inn and heal up, restock on items, sell items and whatnot. Might as well. Uh, next up, you want to head to the right. And there is a room there. And we have some new enemies, the Sea Snake, which are also weak to lightning, strangely enough. <laughs> uh, they can poison you with their physical attacks, so keep that in mind. Wow, 178. That was crazy damage. I think Hope is actually going to be doing more damage than Alexa and Pancake, which is pretty funny when you think about it. But this is like when the game really starts becoming really, really easier. You get these items that have abilities associated with them. And if you're doing a 4 weight mage challenge, uh, 2,000 gold here, once you get to this point and you get the Seuss Gauntlet and the, you know, the Wizard Staff, the Heal Staff, things become so easy that it actually makes it viable. Which is pretty funny to think that you can beat the game with just 4 white mages. Uh, there's nothing in here, so what you want to do is head up this staircase. There's some treasure in this floor, I can't remember, I don't think there's anything in this room. Nope, okay. So first off, let's head to the middle here. We want to go into this big room here because I do remember at least one chest in there, but I might be wrong. But you would think a nice big room should have something in it. And yep, okay, just one. And unguarded, yep, okay. 20 gold. Wow, okay. Wow, that was not even worth coming here. And you would think a big elaborate room would have something more than just 20 gold pieces, but I guess that's the game makers trolling us again. Uh, let's go up here first. I believe there's some more treasure. Looks like there might be. And there is, okay. And this chest is also unguarded, and we get the opal armor, which is a huge upgrade for our fighter. It's actually one of the better pieces of armor in the game, and it protects you from lightning attacks, so you definitely want to equip it. And I think that boost are absorbed to, yeah, 68. So it's like an 8 absorb difference over the previous armor. So you definitely want to make sure you get that. So I think next up we want to head all the way to the bottom where there should be another room. If I'm not mistaken. And you know what I just realized? If we're underwater, how the heck are we... Well, I know we're breathing because we have the Oxy Ale, but how are we keeping ourselves balanced so well? I went scuba diving a couple months ago, and it was really difficult to keep myself kind of level in the water, and if I didn't have like a weighted belt, I would have just floated to the top. Anyways, I'm digressing a bit. Here we have the Light Axe, which is a pretty interesting weapon. Uh, you don't actually want to equip it on anyone, but if you use it, it lets you use Harm 2, which is a pretty useful spell. I'm gonna give it to Pancake just because might as well. If we're fighting a lot of undead monsters, we can use Harm 2 and make quick work of them. Uh, next up, let's head over here. And we have a new enemy, Water Elementals. Now, strangely enough, these things aren't weak to lightning damage, they're actually weak to ice, which is really weird, but still go ahead and use the Zeus Gauntlet because that's really your only means of doing damage with the White Wizard. And they do some pretty wicked damage, but they don't have a lot of hit points, so just take them out as quickly as possible. And I probably wasted an ice two there. If there's only one or two, maybe save your spell charge, but it's not like we're going to be needing our fast spell charges anytime soon. And here we should have one treasure chest, okay. We have the Mage Staff, which is another one of those items that if you use it, it casts a spell. In this case, it's Fire 2, so I'm going to go ahead and give that to Hope just because she could always use some more damaging spells. Uh, next up, we want to go down there. I don't know if we can go around this way. Oh, yeah, we can. Okay, perfect. Thought I was going to have to backtrack a bit. If we're going in this room here, we will have another treasure chest, which contains a lot of gold, which is pretty nice. So make sure you get that. If you go in the staircase here, you come to a level that doesn't actually have any monsters on it, so that's really a good bonus. Also, there's a heck of a lot of treasure in here, so you should be really excited about this. Uh, this is the top level of the dungeon, so there's nowhere going up, and that's a mermaid, wow. That must be the uh, the mermaids those people were talking about in town. So that's what she has to say. You have responded to me. What do you mean, responded? I talked to you? That's kind of weird. Maybe a mistranslation on their part. Uh, let's talk to her. Uh, not there. If we cannot regain the power of water, we will become bubbles and then disappear. What? <laughs> Mermaids turn into bubbles if they don't... I don't even know, that's kind of weird. Oh, we have some treasure chests here, first of which has 9,000 gold. Here we have 1760 gold, and we have the opal bracelet. 
which is a really, really useful piece of equipment. I'm gonna go ahead and give this to Pancake, actually, strangely enough. Just because now that Pancake is a master, he's starting to gain a lot of hit points really quickly, so I'm gonna actually switch him into my second position, and having that Opal Bracelet gives him just enough absorb that he's actually gonna be able to take hits pretty well. So I think next up, let's go in this room here, what do you have to say? My friend Daryl went to the land and never returned, I wonder what happened. Maybe she grew legs and walked away, hmm. Kinda reminds me of My Little Mermaid. Or My Little Mermaid, what am I thinking about? Little Mermaid. Uh, I talked to her, unbelievably can breathe on the water, I'm impressed. Well you should be. I drink a lot of Oxyel to get down here. Uh, next up, let's go this way first. This is pretty interesting in that all maps in this game loop on each other, but the game developers didn't actually use this until this point here. So as we come across here, we're actually on the far eastern part of the map now, as opposed to what you would consider the western side, which is pretty interesting. So if you look up a map online, you'll see, you'll understand what I'm saying. But it's the only way to get this treasure chest. And it looks like we're full on armor, so I'm going to have to drop something. Um... Gonna go ahead and drop the silver helmet, and let's see what we get. Uh, let's face the chest first. We get the opal helmet. Hmm, that's pretty convenient. It's like I knew that was actually in there. So I'm gonna go ahead and equip that now, just because the opal helmet is pretty powerful. It's probably one of the best helmets in the game. Uh, there is an item later on. I'm gonna be substituting it for, but for now, opal helmet's gonna be really useful. And it looks like we have some more armor in there. Whoops, wrong screen. So let's drop, um, what should I drop? I guess I'm going to drop, I'll drop the ice armor, even though I could probably sell it, but uh, what can I do? Opal gauntlet, which is pretty useful, but I have the protect ring, so I'm actually not going to be using it. And here we have the slab, which is what we need for uh, Dr. Une to translate uh, the La Fiendish. So we'll have to go and check on him once we finish with this area here. But we're down on this side, so let's head back over. And wow, we're getting some pretty good treasure, and there's still quite a bit more to go, so uh, I'm pretty excited. I love treasure. It's probably my favorite part of Final Fantasy games, getting new items and whatnot. If we come here, we have some gold, which is nice to have. Uh, let's go talk to this person down here. Please make the orb shine again. Well, I'm working on it. Talk to her. You are the legendary... Legendary what? Legendary Pokemon? No. Legendary Warriors. Uh, we have some more gold, which is always nice to have. Uh, I think, yeah, let's go up here. Ooh, two chests. Are we going to become bubbles? No, don't worry. We got 10,000 gold and 10 gold, which is interesting. Why would they put those two next to each other? I don't know. You'd think they would like split them up into two chests, but no. Uh, did I go down here yet? Can't remember now. Did I talk to you? No, okay. The shrine's top floor, the fiend of the water, Kraken, lives on the bottom floor. Okay, so the third fiend is going to be a Kraken. And let's talk to you. To unlock the mirrored tower, the La Fiendish used a mus musical tone. So now that we have the slab and we can understand the Fiendish, maybe we can learn that musical tone and then we can go to the Sky Tower. Mm. Makes sense. Uh, Pure Potion. Okay, whatever. Not really that useful. Did I go up there? I don't think I did. And there is a chest in here. And 5,000 gold. So it's a good thing I came back and looked. But we're almost done here, so that's good. And we'll talk to her. If you'll face me. As long as the Fiend of Water lives, we... Oh, boo-hoo. They're so emotional, these mermaids. Always worrying about turning into bubbles and always crying. But we have one last treasure chest here, and it contains some sort of armor. So let's see, uh, which would I drop now? I really don't want to get rid of anything, but... Let's get rid of... The gold bracelet, might as well. Hopefully it's something worthwhile. And it's the opal shield, which is really worthwhile. You want to give this to your fighter, or knight, obviously. Again, it protects you against lightning damage, but it also gives you a heck of a lot more absorb. So definitely pick that up. 
So now that we've gotten all the treasure on the top couple floors of the water shrine, I'm going to head back to town, sell off some equipment that I don't need, and then in the next episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy 1, we're going to go to the bottom of the water shrine and take on the Kraken. Until then, my name is Paper Napkin, take it easy folks.